You're listening to To The Spirit Podcast. Hi, friends, and welcome to The Spirit. I'm Beck. And I'm Steph. Hi, Steph. Hi, Beck. Today's episode is all about So That Happened. We have a special guest with us. Welcome, Rachel Scissorhands. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Hi, Rachel. <laughs> this is where we're going to discuss just the strange things that have happened to us throughout our existence, throughout our lives, our childhood, our adulthood, whatever that may be. Should we have our guest start? I think we should. Okay. Would you like to start? Sure. I'll start. Okay. <laughs> Sounded very... Very NPR. <laughs> very NPR. <laughs> So, as a child, I experienced a lot of weird stuff that I didn't understand. A lot of stuff happened in the middle of the night. I'd wake up to weird things, and then I'd get freaked out. So then I'd always run down to my mom and dad's room and probably really disturb them. And then they'd bring me back to bed. But on one particular night, I woke up feeling freaked out, did the same thing, ran down to my parents' room. My mom said, I'll tuck you in, just let me go to the bathroom first. So she's in the bathroom, I'm sitting in my bed, and I don't have my glasses on, so everything's blurry. I'm looking at my doorway. From the way that the living room was coming opposite of the bathroom, I see a woman in a long red long sleeve shirt, long black hair, swing around in my doorway to look at me, and it's all blurry because I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> yeah. wow. So all I know is I put the blankets over my head and started screaming for my mom and have no idea who it was. Did you ever see her again since? No. And to me that shows that it wasn't a mind's eye view. It was more her real vision because it was blurry. So she's seeing something more real, a real apparition. Some people see things, but it's more their mind's eye. Yeah. So Mm. she really physically saw it because her vision was blurred. She couldn't see her, which maybe that was a blessing that you couldn't see her fully, you know? Because she swung around and looked at you? Yeah, like her hair swung. Oh, it was long black hair. So, you know, that long black hair. Maybe she was looking for a haircut. (laughs) But it's so creepy to to think of that blurry face and you're just like, who was that? And you have no idea what the message was. No. You have no idea who she was. No. And you never saw her again. Never. Hmm. Did you ever try to look at maybe pictures of a family member that might matched up with that that died? Or You know, I didn't. And the weird thing, it almost seemed like more modern because she had almost a long red sweatshirt on or something. Right. So it didn't seem like it was, you know, the white lady of the past or right. something like that. The it creepy was, white lady yeah. of the past. Did you ever tell your parents? Yeah. What did they think of that? I think I just made them uncomfortable all the time. (laughs) I have some weird childhood stuff. I have so many weird ones. This is where I believe that my sister and I went into like another dimension or a portal. I grew up in this small town that used to be a farm area, Lakeland. It's right on the lake. You can actually see the city from the top of the hill in Lakeland. There was a lot of country bordering our neighborhood, so my sister and I and also my other family members would like to go for walks, and we would explore, especially when we were kids, and we liked woods and everything is spooky when you're a kid anyways. We were up near Our Lady of Peace Church, which is a Catholic church in the neighborhood, and that borders woods. And because we were young, we didn't know where everything led to, so we see this trail there's like the border of the property of the church and we see this trail. We're like, wow, I've never seen this trail before. Why don't we go down it? So we went down the trail and the trail starts turning into this wide open space. And the wide open space was dry in a desert. And granted, I think we were having a lot of dry weather anyway, so it wasn't unusual looking. It's not like it looked like Arizona or anything. It just looked like our type of land. Nothing really growing, just sparse dry pieces of grass, that type of thing. Crack brown and so crack dry grass what was the ground smelled like patchouli (laughs) (laughs) so we're both in it we're both looking around it looked like it was flat and it went on forever and i even found an orange colored arrow and it wasn't like it was a native american arrow it was definitely the type you would get if you were doing archery set and it had the bullet type tip not like a really sharp tip 
and I brought it home. But anyways, while we were there, nothing in particular happened. We came out of the trail and we bumped into a friend of ours who was on his bike. And we're like, oh, we found this new awesome area to explore. It's like a big open area and it looks like a desert. You know, we're telling him and he's looking at us like we're weird, but we're all pretty young, elementary school age. And we start going down the trail. We're trying to show him we can't find it. Like we walked right into it. It was one way, walked into it. He just was like, I don't know, whatever. He didn't really care about it. But my sister and I were like, we know what we saw. We were both in there. We became a little obsessed with this afterwards, why we couldn't find it again, went back, tried to go into this big, vast area that was flat and looked like it went on forever. We went down the trail again, and it it just ended, and there was a hill, and there was someone's backyard. It's all hill, and that's the truth. I've been there a zillion times, and we found this person's backyard that was so hilly that the woman was back there. She's like, oh, I have kids come back here, and so we talked to them. She was doing a garden. We're like, well, isn't there a big big field back here but it's desert looking kept on asking her she's like no just the hill did you guys happen to eat any magic mushrooms yeah (laughs) didn't eat anything if we ate anything it was probably candy that day but uh (laughs) unless it was laced with something i have no idea to this day so it's just a big desert that appeared yeah we walked into a vortex (laughs) i'm making jokes about it we can't explain that at all to me it was like it looked as real as can be And it never came back. Never came back. We looked for it a million times because we kept on thinking, did we go some way that was different? Now when I know that area really well, when you're a kid, you don't really know my surrounding areas as well. Now I know it. And I've explored it a million times afterwards, so I'm pretty certain on that. But Like a portal. It was. (laughs) The (laughs) The in-between world. (laughs) The in-between world that's a desert field (laughs) with bows and arrows in it. That's unexplainable. That's weird. Yeah, it was a weird experience. I definitely remember living in an old hospital when I was a kid. There was a lot of weird stuff that went down there. It was an old hospital from the 1800s, and it was repurposed for the YMCA, but it was a YWCA for women, and it was mostly for single moms that were leaving abusive husbands or trying to make it on their own or young women trying to make it on their own. And we stayed there for quite a while. I think the freakiest thing was there was this little girl that used to sit at the end of a dark hallway all the time and sing nursery rhymes and talk to the air. And I would go by her and be totally freaked out. Like, who is she talking to? What is she doing? And I ended up having to befriend her because she was so lonely that her mother would say to my mother, could they be friends? I didn't want to, (laughs) but I would go into her room and she was kind of in her own world anyway. She really didn't interact with me. It wasn't like, let's play guess who together. It was more like, I'm going to dance around all creepy by myself. And (laughs) this went on. (laughs) This went on. And a lot of paranormal things happened around her. Things would fly down the hallway, like toys would roll. And she ended up, dying which is crazy whoa yeah and i feel bad you mean because, dying young or dying? yeah dying young and i don't remember what it was from but her mom was a lunch lady at my school they were nice i mean she was just an odd kid and i feel bad because i used to tell my mom i don't want to hang out with her she's a weirdo and then i would tell my friends she's a weirdo <laughs> and then she died <laughs> and she died and i feel really bad i think her name was Lindsay. maybe she'll come in to one of your next sessions we should ask for. I don't know if I want that. <laughs> <laughs> but I bet she'd be powerful if she did. Well, maybe she had a lot of gifts because she was about to die. So maybe things were happening for her to get her ready. That could have been. She could have been having visitations the whole time. Yeah. And they were like friends to her. But to me, it was totally creepy. It mm-hmm. was like, why are dolls moving around and floating and little things are flying down the hallway? And no. It's like the creepy kid in every movie. Yes. <laughs> yeah, those are the ones you're like, I don't want to go near them. <laughs> <laughs> Energy, too, you know? They yeah. they feel instantly. They know who they want. They do. They can be friends with and who you can't because yeah. they notice there's differences. I had a weird experience as a kid that another one I can't explain to this day. I don't know if it was paranormal or if I had a fever. Was I sick? Was it the little people? <laughs> they were little people. They were also dressed like 1960s or 50s. I don't know what you call it, like sock hop dancers. 
Okay. She's wearing a poodle skirt. I figured it out. There's been carbon monoxide in your house. You were going into deserts, seeing little sock hop that people house at the end of your bed. I lived in had a lot of stuff going on in it. But I don't know what to attribute this to because it would be like my first paranormal or mental experience. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember waking up early and looking at the end of my bed and they were standing at the end of my bed and I was so scared that I threw the covers over my head. What? Okay. <laughs> Wait. So you're seeing John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John standing down there like <laughs> grease lightning. Basically. And you're scared of that? But I was, they're little. I was, yeah, they were little and they they were trying to get my attention. How big is little? We're talking a couple inches. Like Barbie doll big, you know, like, like kind of, yeah. So not like munchkin land little, littler than that. Yeah, they weren't like munchkin people. They look like us, but shrunk down to a barbie size. It's like real, they look like real people. Did they talk? Yes, they talked, but I don't remember what they said. Did and they sing? I no. got chills, so both are flying. <laughs> Didn't sing. They were trying to communicate with me. They were very friendly, I remember. Pulled the covers over my head, and then I fell asleep. But it was daylight. You know, I fell asleep in the morning when the sun was already up. So I saw them in the daylight. It wasn't like it was at night or spooky. But then this the other weird thing that happened is when I awoke again, I saw a woman's head floating. Mm. And she was on the side of my wall, not at the end of my bed. And she was talking like mathematics or something. It was like physics and mathematics. That it was so scary. weird. There's definitely <laughs> and something. she was a blue-skinned person. Okay, this is definitely <laughs> like Kiwi's <laughs> Playhouse. It looks like mecca like a high mecca high <laughs> Bad <laughs> do yeah, you that was think, my weirdest experience. Do you think spirit could, they could have showed up as tiny to make you feel less scared? That's what I kind of thought. Like maybe, maybe I knew that maybe they were my angels. They're trying to make it seem more friendly, but it didn't work <laughs> whatsoever. Do you think your dad was giving you cough syrup with codeine or Benadryls? <laughs> To slow I have you no down idea. A little bit. <laughs> I know that my mother told me once that well, we drove to the Adirondacks to go to like Enchanted Forest or I don't know North Pole, New York. Any of you guys been? Have you been to okay. that? Back? No. Have you? Not North Pole, but Adirondacks. Okay, North Pole, New York. They have like a Santa Claus village or something. So they stayed at a motel. I started getting sick. I remember puking. My fever was like 106. And while they're taking me to the hospital there, she says I was seeing elephants and bears and things. You know, I was verbally saying, look, there's a bear. Okay. So I know, like, I there was a point in my life that I actually hallucinated. I don't remember being sick. I only remember being in the hospital wearing the little children's nightgown thing that they gave you. Both my parents had to leave me there. They couldn't stay the night. Hmm. It's all I remember it being very dark, but I don't have any memories of hallucinating bears or elephants. But my mom said that my fever was so high. But in the situation where I saw the little people, I don't think I had a fever. Did they bring you any kind of enlightenment? No, they tried to talk to me. I would not listen. I threw the covers over my head and tried to force myself to sleep, which I did go to sleep. I don't think I'd be afraid of Barbie doll type things at that they were No, they weren't scary looking at all. And I wasn't scared of what they look like, but I was like, why are there two little people down in my bed? You know, I didn't know. It was a boy and a girl? Yeah. Gals, I think, is summer loving. <laughs> you know, and why were they dressed like poodle skirt and like, they look Gracers. Like, he wasn't a, he, did, he didn't wear, um. What, he look more like Archie? Yeah, he looked more like khaki pants or something, you know, like very nice and neat looking. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, that was weird. I don't understand that at all. It's weird, though. To me, it makes no sense, especially the floating head that she was giving me. And I was seeing images when she was giving me, like, math and science stuff. Didn't know what she was talking about. I could see it visually. You're like what the good was, doctor. Yeah, what she was Things talking just... about. I wish, you know, that is my worst worst subject in school. You would think that it was would like impart, a download. Yeah, you think they could impart something on me. Yeah. 
but that was my absolute worst in school. But you know, it see it looked like ja- you know, look like lines and numbers. You know? I, I love your paranormal experiences. Mine, <laughs> mine were all like kind of horrifying. I'd love to. I, like, I wandered ones. into the desert, and then when I got home, I saw little people, little Barbie dolls at the end of my bed. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, about you, Rachel Scissorhands? Mm, mine are really they're creepy. No, we like creepy, don't yeah. we? I mean. I mean, the same place where I lived, and it was like out near Phoenix, New York. I don't know. There's a lot of activity. I remember there's like two little stories. One, I remember laying in bed. This is probably my first paranormal experience that I can remember. I was laying in bed and I just hear a female voice or whatever just going, Rachel. Oh man. Rachel. And you know, I'm thinking it up. I go in the living room. My parents are watching TV and I said, what, what do you want? And they're like, nothing i go but but i hear people saying my name <laughs> my mom's just like oh it's probably just the angel sweetie go back to bed <laughs> and i'm just like okay don't worry about it yeah it's just <laughs> and i mean you know if, that, if that's your kid i'd be turning looking at my husband like what the hell yeah. and then look the, the weirdest one i have no idea what it means waking up here psst, and then I open my eyes, and then I hear, psst, like that, like someone's trying to get my attention. So mm-hmm. I sit up, then I hear, shh, shh, and then I hear a man's voice just go, five, five. What? I booked it to my parents' <laughs> room to go, you know, disturb them again, because, you know, and I, it, it chills me, just, I can hear his voice so strongly, you know, it just never mm-hmm. left me. Wow. But like... What? <laughs> so I'm I'm seeing kind of parallels here with coding. Is you know you're getting this floating blue head that's spitting numbers out, and she's getting five five. Hmm. Maybe it's the same person. <laughs> <laughs> she just didn't see the floating head. You what saw the blue it. skin. Yeah. Maybe it was the aliens. Now, do you guys tend to see things more or hear things more? Here. I don't way. know. I don't know what I'm. Yeah, because I've had so many different things and it's never consistent, so I don't know. But I know I've had a lot of dreams. Is that the only time they can really communicate with me? Because I'm sitting still, I'm not fidgeting around. But I've had a lot of dreams and they have seem very significant to me at the time. They're all over the place, my experiences, so I don't know if it's just one way or... And I wish it was consistent mm-hmm. because it would feel better that I could rely on that one type of experience i knew it was going to happen but it doesn't it's just sporadic have you guys ever had any paranormal experiences with the living meaning maybe you've come across what we might call a guardian angel somebody that looked of flesh and looked real but there was something spectacular or paranormal about it i hear people experience it but i don't know if i've ever i did Okay. Okay. Now I knew I did. I just had to find the memory. So I was at St. Joseph's Church in Camillus. It's not 24 hour adoration, but they leave the chapel open. They leave the Blessed Sacrament there so you can pray. And it's usually from like nine in the morning till like nine at night or something. So I went there during the day and there was a guy in there, the only other person in there. And when you go in or out, it's got a really loud noise with the door you know it makes a really strong like you know like you can't avoid that noise and you always feel awkward going in or out of there because it's so peaceful and quiet in the chapel and all of a sudden you're making this noise so he's in there i'm praying i'm the only other person in there all of a sudden i look and he's not there anymore (laughs) (laughs) and i was like who was that person i kept thinking was he a soul in purgatory or an angel this room is so small it's just a little bit bigger than your office here you would know if he left. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You would hear the door. I could always see him at peripheral sharing a small space together. So I'm sitting as far away as I possibly could. Mm-hmm. But I could always see him in my peripheral. And all of a sudden I noticed he wasn't there. So I was like, well, how the heck did he get out of here without me noticing him? I wasn't zoning out or anything. And I would have heard that. If I was zoning out, I think just that noise alone would have broken me out of it. So I don't know. I always thought that was really weird. And I ended up praying for him because I thought, well, if it's a soul, maybe he needs prayer or something. And that's why he was 
in the chapel. But he looked real. He looked real, yeah. Another time I was in the chapel, I heard these weird noises. There was a couple people in there, and I hear this. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Sounds like someone snoring. (laughs) It was like. that. And I was losing it. I'm like, I couldn't concentrate. And then some other people left. I still heard it. And then finally I figured out. Guy brought his dog in there and he put it underneath the chair. (laughs) (laughs) I was waiting for something spectacular. No, it was a dog. (laughs) This woman appeared out of nowhere, really, at my mom's picnic. And she came and sat at the picnic table with me. And just started being my friend. It wasn't like I was a little, little kid going, oh, look, I have an imaginary friend. This was like a real lady. And I was kind of alone. I don't remember having many kids at the picnic. They were all older teenagers. I wanted to play with them volleyball, I think they were playing. But they were like, get out of here, kid. You're too little. You can't have a beer and hang with us. So I sat kind of depressed, drinking my soda at the table, and this lady came and befriended me, and she made me feel really special. And then she told me she was getting a ride home from my grandmother. My grandmother had dropped us off at this picnic. She was going to drive us home, and this woman was going to ride with us. And (laughs) I sat in the back seat with this woman. My mother was up front with my grandmother. And while we were in the back seat, she put her hand on my lap and said, I'm your guardian angel. Now, this lady did not look like any, like, oh, she just looked like a heavy set middle-aged woman. And when I asked my mother who that lady was that we dropped off, because she had said this she was a lady of the woods. This is, this was not a sister, <laughs> sister. of the wood line. Of the wood. But I, I, I asked, you know, <laughs> I asked my mom, who was that lady? Who, who you worked with that lady? And she was like, what lady? Like the lady that grandma dropped off. And I specifically remember my grandmother dropping her off. That's what's weird. We stopped the car. She got out. She said something probably beautiful to me like, remember. (laughs) (laughs) Always hold love in your... I don't know. You know, she probably said something like that because it was just so, whoa. And then she left and I thought, this is amazing. And then my mom was like, I don't know who the hell you're talking about. We never (laughs) gave a lady a ride home. Are you sure? I don't even remember having a friend that looks like the description you're telling me. Hmm. But I kept having those little things happen where people would randomly say, I'm your guardian angel. How many do I have? I mean, I must have needed help. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know at least everybody has one, but I'm sure there's people that have a bunch. Well, it's like that time I was I was with my brother and my sister Jess and I was visiting my brother in California and we're in Yosemite National Park and I walked up this waterfall thing with him with Converse. You know, it was very slippery. I was super terrified to go back down and I saw this big thing that I was like, I'm going to slide down this big boulder because I thought it would be easier. And then right when I'm ready to do it, it was my brother grabbed my wrist and says, no, nope, you're going to go down the hard way. And I was like, all right, fine. So when we get to the bottom, I saw where I was trying to slide down. It was like a hundred foot straight drop. It just looked at the angle from the top like it curved, like you could slide down it. But it really was like an illusion. Yeah. And I would have probably died or broke my leg. Been paralyzed. But then when I asked my brother, wow, you really saved me back there. And he's like, what the hell are you talking about? That's who I saw save me was my brother. But he's like, I didn't do that. He's like, I was what I'm talking about. Yeah, so I was like, holy cow, well, that must have been an angel. Then. Yeah. I mean, it happens. It sounds so weird to people, mm-hmm. but those things happen. So sometimes it's almost like you feel, you really feel witchy because you talk about somebody or you think about somebody and then out of the blue, they appear. Yeah. And you know, a client of mine and Andrea... We used to work somewhere where there was somebody's friend and then their niece and there was just, I don't know, drama. And we all went out to eat, my client and Andrea and I, and then, you know, talking about the past events. And doesn't the two people just show up in the restaurant out of nowhere? And we're all prepared to just be like, hi, and just be cordial but they literally just turned their head, turned it and like over-exaggerated just so they didn't look at us and walk by. 
And it was just like such a strange moment. And then we saw the salon owner and like we left, Andrew and I, and then, then there she was getting in her car exactly parked across from us. And it was just like, what the heck? Hmm. Yeah. All in the same day, like an hour. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like and they we... were planning it. <laughs> Thought of someone and then the phone rang. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. happened, or an email came in, or a message on my Facebook, or something. I've had weird synchronicities too that yeah. happen, but we—I mm-hmm. think we all experience that. The ones that are open-minded see it more often. The ones that don't pay attention, they're missing out because you're like, "What the hell? Why am I seeing crows everywhere?" <laughs> and you start feeling crazy. You're like, "Am I an Alfred Hitchcock? The birds? Is anyone else seeing all the crows?" And they're like, "Calm down." <laughs> It's gross. It's gross. I remember back when I was in middle school, we used to play light as a feather, stiff as a board. Do you guys remember that game? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I didn't ever believe it worked. I really thought we were all just literally picking the person up. And we never got them past six inches off the floor. And usually they were all flopping. But there was a girl, and she had the power at lunch break. We would go out to the playground, and we'd get our victim to lay. (laughs) We'd give them their story. You died in a horrible bicycle accident. This girl, for some reason, she'd be at the head of the person. And we literally had our two fingers. It wasn't our hands. It was our two fingers. And there was a group of us. I would say three people on each side and the girl at the head. This girl levitated above our heads to the point where we were barely... This sounds so unreal, but it was... To the point where we thought she was going to float away. Wow. And I didn't know what would happen if we just took our hands out. Would she continue to float? Like, what was the highest I've ever seen? And all of our little fingers were just like... Can you explain her experience being up there like that? Like The girl that floated? She was freaking out. She was like, what's happening? (laughs) (laughs) Don't let me fall! Don't let me fall! (laughs) And then the girl that did it... This has to be her because this magic never happened before. So we did it again and we replicated it. It happened again. Wow. So then I was like, you're magical. We need to do light as a feather, stiff as a board every day. <laughs> <laughs> and then she was kind of like, no, I got to stop. But yeah, that was amazing to me. I never had that work. We've done it at sleepovers. We did it all the time because, you know, that was the thing to do in the 80s, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Bloody Mary. Yeah, I bloody hated that. That was so scary to me. As a kid. I think it was yeah. You're trying to scare yourself, but did you ever do Bloody scary. Mary? I I don't think I went down the Bloody Mary road. Oh, that's I was good. too scared. That's good. <laughs> Knowing you, you'd probably see something. Yes, you would have. <laughs> you would have saw her. I would have saw something. <laughs> yeah, that was my light as a board, stiff as a feather. That's that. I you know I tried playing light that as a feather, stiff with as my a friends. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why she was floating, because we're getting it wrong. I was was saying it backwards, that's the key. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, gosh. One of my favorite things to do is, you know, like a lot of kids, ride your bike throughout the neighborhood now. I had this routine at night where I used to like to go from the certain street down all these hills and go fast, and it was nighttime, and I was with Jessica, and we distinctly heard a person off in the distance It sounded like... Someone had a microphone. A megaphone? Yeah, I mean, but not like the megaphone sound, but just like the voice was projected. And we both looked at each other and we're like, run! You know, like, get on our bikes and just <laughs> went as fast as we could. We're like, what the hell? And, my, and Jessica was like, dude, someone said my name and it came through the woods and it was really loud. And I couldn't figure that one out either. It sounded like very big and... Wasn't a friend. No. It was didn't sound like it was coming from a person. It I don't know how what? to. I don't know how to explain it. Was, was it a sister of the woodland forest? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is our inside joke for the podcast. <laughs> it was like a mysterious sounding voice. You know, it's. I don't know how to explain it, but it was just like you heard Jessica. Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> like whispery <laughs> below. What? Oh, it's freaky. And just like, I heard her say my name. It sounded like I just farted. My shoes rubbed together. I heard it. (laughs) She puts me through editing hell. (laughs) I'm leaving it in. Okay. I'm going to just step ripped one. (laughs) 
Rachel, I know you have another story for us. Okay, this one is freaky. Um, so I was like 16 years old. When By the way, that's a UFO. Yeah. yeah. They, <laughs> they come, come down. <laughs> Tell her stuff. This is the UFO highway. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes there's UFOs that sound somewhat like a Harley Davidson. Right, but don't <laughs> be confused. Okay, apologize. <laughs> Let's pick up. Okay, yeah, so I was 16 years old. And, you know, I've had a lot of dreams about the future. So I had a dream that I was standing in a field and I look up in the sky and I see two airplanes coming closer and closer and boldly on the planes, it says USA. And they're both coming crashing down near me and I'm running from the fire and smoke and the chaos So I wake up, I tell my mom, I said, mom, there's going to be a plane crash today. Like, so dead set on it. I turn on the news all morning, getting ready for school. I'm just waiting to hear about the plane crash. Didn't hear anything. So I'm just like, keep me posted, mom. If you hear anything, like, let me know. I think, you know, we had cricket phones. (laughs) 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 So we still had communication back in the day, but I'm sitting in the middle of Spanish class. And all of a sudden they say on the speaker, they announce the crashing in the Twin Towers. Mm -hmm. It was 9-11, the day I woke up and had that dream. Wow. My mom, my grandma still to this day, like, bring that up because it's so freaky. And I did hear a lot of people had visions about 9-11. Yes. Yes. So I don't know... If the universe, they were letting us all know, you know, Mm -hmm. random people, but I was stunned. The fact that it said USA and there was two two planes, planes. I mean, I don't know. And chaos and carnage. Yeah. And then I do remember after it all settled, I remember finding like a safety box of some sort. I don't even know if they ever found any boxes or anything. There's a conspiracy behind that. And in fact, there's a link to Syracuse because of that. Now... Who's the wrestler that had the, he was governor of... Jesse Ventura. Yeah, Jesse yes. Ventura. So he, he <laughs> interviewed a guy right over at Little Germ Diner. <laughs> 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 yeah. And it was on his show, and he went down to New York to go help out, volunteer with the tragedy. And he saw the black boxes. They pointed it out to him and said, these are the black boxes. They weren't hiding them at the time. They had recovered them. And then all of a sudden they said they couldn't find the black boxes. So he said, I know they're there because I saw them and they pointed it out to me. So he got on Jesse Ventura show to to talk about that. But I don't know. That's Um, weird. That is weird. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of strange stuff. You could go all different ways with the whole 9-11. But she is right about people around the world having premonitions of that or dreams or... And I was angry I didn't. Really? Yeah, because... One, I had a relative that was in the tower. You would think that God would be like, I'm going to mm. yeah, let I you was know gonna say this was going to happen. The association strained because you would yeah. have thought someone she would have known would be in the tower. Yeah. When it happened for me, when I found out, it was completely took me off guard. And I was angry that it took me off guard because I thought, I was in Italy in religious life. I'm thinking, I'm close to God. Why didn't he let me yeah. know? <laughs> Just some 16-year-old kid. Yeah. (laughs) But there had to be a reason. I think maybe the reason was to let you know that you had this ability. Yeah. Mm. Maybe to help you to trust. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Trust and validation through that. So I'd like to thank our guest, Rachel Scissorhand, for coming on the show. Yes, thank you, Rachel Scissorhand. <laughs> Thanks for having me. And this has been fun talking about our stories. I feel like we have a lot more. I have a lot more stories than this. Oh, def- I have a lot more as well. I'm sure Rachel does, too. Oh, but- I'm sure. So thank you, listeners. Hey, and if you like our podcast, make sure to subscribe. Hit that like button on YouTube. And even rate us if you can on Apple, because that will help us jump up in the algorithm. Shoot us an email. To the spirit pod at gmail.com. So again, thank you and God bless. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. To the spirit podcast. <laughs> Supernatural science. In the I'm ghost. Psychic. Mystic. Spirit. Divine source. Heaven. The dead. It's magic, magic.